When we were leaving, uh, when we, were, we got these talks, if we go back to Townsville before we left, there was a lot more intel, there was a lot more, we had doctors coming and talking to us about what the experience was going to be like because they'd already been over there and done six weeks over and had come back and could tell us all of this stuff. So we went over there with our eyes a little bit um, more open than the first group did. And I remember one of the things that happened was a doctor showing a video. He had this video of travelling from the airport to the barracks and he showed us the road all the way down and we sat there and we watched this thing and, and he said, and they'll take pot shots at your vehicles as you're travelling along. And I thought, oh, that's nice, isn't it? But he said, don't worry, you'll be there during the day. It's fine, they, they won't take too many shots at you during the day. So we're heading over to Rwanda, about to jump on the plane and Qantas has our plane grounded. The plane is Tower Air, number five jumbo ever to come off the, the line. And this plane was a charter and the plane was normally used to take Jewish people on pilgrimages. So to go into different countries, pick up all these Jewish people, take them to, it's not Mecca, but take them to um, uh, Israel to do their thing. So, uh, very old aircraft and Qantas were annoyed that they didn't get the charter to take us over. So they, this plane was grounded. So this set us back over 24 hours and it was actually more like 36 hours because all of our stuff was loaded on the plane and they decided, well, we couldn't hang around the airport any longer. So they took us back to the barracks through a few um, mattresses on the ground, we all slept there in the same clothes, got up the next day in the same clothes and boarded this aircraft. What that meant was that we were actually arriving in Rwanda um, at almost the same time the other guys should have been leaving and at night time. So there we are, we get off this plane in this uh, airport that is just totally shot up. We get in these trucks and they load us in these trucks and they load us back to back so we're looking out of the truck at the side. Sides are all rolled up. It's now night time. And I'm thinking, shit, these guys take pot shots at you at night time. And I'm thinking, this is great. And I turned around and I looked at the infantry soldier that was in the truck with us. He had a weapon, but no magazine. And I said to the guy, oi, where's your magazine? He said, oh no, we've had to hand them all in um, because we're leaving. So everything had to be accounted for. They gave us some weapons so we looked like we could look after you or protect you, I think was the word. And I just went, oh my God, and I put my head in my hand, in my lap and went, I'm gonna die. And that was my first experience in Rwanda. And I don't think I really shook that feeling the whole time that I was there, to be perfectly honest. I just thought, what the hell have I stepped into?